suffering for the followers of Christ is a sign that God is their father. Somewhere in the world, now, somebody's perishing for their faith. And it has always been so. We are being killed all day long. We are counted like sheep to be slaughtered. Stephen's face shone like an angel. His face shone like an angel. They could not resist his wisdom. And they killed him. We're the young men and women of this generation who will hold their lives cheap and be faithful unto death, who will lose their lives for Christ, flinging them away for love of him. Where are those who will live dangerously and be reckless in his service? Where are the men of prayer? Where are the men who count God's word as more important to them than their daily food? Where are the men who, like Moses of old, commune with God face to face as a man speaks with his friend? Where are God's men in this day of God's power? Where are the pastors who say with the Apostle Paul, I don't count my life of any value or as precious to myself, if only I might finish my course and complete the work that he gave me to do to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. I'm nothing, I just have a job. God, keep me faithful on the job and then let me drop and go to the reward. Where are the pastors who say with Joab, to his brother Abishai, surrounded by Syrians and Ammonites. Brother, be courageous and let us play the man for our God and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what seems good to him. Where is the Joab today? Where, where are the women? The single women and the married women and the pastor's wives who say with Esther when Mordecai came to her and said, you got to do this because your people are perishing. And she says, tell him to fast and I will go into the king though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Where are those women? The world is not going to glorify Christ because they see that Christians are wealthy and healthy and prosperous. Very simple reason why. That's what they live for. They're not impressed. Jesus is the ticket. When the show starts, you throw the ticket away. They don't need your ticket. They're not impressed. I'm saying what I'm saying because I want them to be impressed. They're not impressed with us. Prosperous, wealthy, safe, middle class, do what everybody else does. People, don't build a church like that. The followers of Jesus will suffer. I, I don't want to escape from that number. All the followers of Jesus will suffer. I don't want to escape from that number. Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas? No! 
How could you ever want such a thing? How could you ever want such a thing? You don't want that. You want to embrace it, hold it, live it, and have your lives marked by radical brightness and radical saltiness and risk-taking and sacrifice. It's the only life the world will regard with anything that might open them to consider the glory of our treasure. Let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. You see what that's saying? Jesus is not standing back and saying, go there. It's not, not the way it's... He's saying, I'm out, I'm out here. You're in there where it's so comfortable. It's so safe inside Jerusalem. It's so safe inside the church, inside the house. I'm out here. Come to me. Brothers and sisters, the sweetest fellowship with your Savior and your treasure that you will ever know is the fellowship of his sufferings.